Today, I'm going to demonstrate how we can secure our key cloak instances using HTTPS and Nginx. Nginx is a load balancer, which means that it can distribute incoming traffic to several backend servers. In our case, our backend server is going to be key cloak. And the way we're going to do this today is by SSL termination, which is a process that occurs when the load balancer handles the SSL encryption and decryption, and then the traffic that the load balancer sends to the backend server is in HTTP. And this helps reduce your SSL management overhead since all you have to manage are the SSL certs on the load balancer as opposed to managing them on the actual backend server. So if you have multiple instances, you would have to manage all the SSL certificates on that instance, on all those instances, as opposed to having it in the load balancer, which is what we're going to have it today. So in a nutshell, that's what SSL termination is. Now, one caveat here is that if you do this, you want to make sure that the back end or the back end servers are in a private network and only the load balancer can send traffic to them. So you don't want to do this in a public network because that defeats the purpose. Because if you send the HTTPS traffic to engine X and engine X sends the HTTP requests to your back end server, then those are easily visible by someone who is able to view your traffic because the traffic to the backend servers is not encrypted. So you want to make sure that A, this is in a private network and B, only your load balancer can send traffic to those backend servers. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using Docker. So I'm going to create a key cloak uh, Docker image and then I'm going to create rather key cloak Docker container that's going to run key cloak and then a Postgres Docker container as well that's going to run the database that the key cloak instance is going to be saving to. And then I'm going to create an engine X image and container as well. And that's going to be our reverse proxy or load balancer. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a folder here that's going to store all of these configs. So I will simply name it app. And then in here, I know I'm going to need an engine X directory for the engine X configs. And then I'm also going to need a Docker file because I'm going to define the Nginx image settings in the Docker file. And then when I use Docker Compose, I'm going to build that in the Docker Compose. So I will just have here Docker file. And then I will have the Docker Compose file as well. Okay, so now I know I'm going to need a private key and public key for the HTTPS. So I'll create a folder here for storing that and I'll just call it certs. And then I will go to let's encrypt to find the command for generating those. Local development and yep, it's what I'm looking for. And let me navigate to that folder. It's that in localhost CRT, localhost key. All right, looks good. If I check, certs are in there. Now that I have that, I'm going to get the Docker Compose. I already have this ready. So I'll just paste that Docker Compose code in here. And I will go through this step by step through each service. So we have the key cloak service here, and I'm pulling this image from the official key cloak uh, image repository, and I'm using key cloak version 20.0.0. This is the start command. I'm using dev for now. And then it's environment variables. So key cloak requires certain variables. KCDB just specifies the type of database. In this case, we're using post, uh, Postgres. The name of the host is Postgres key cloak demo, which matches the Postgres service name down here. The database name is going to be Keycloak. Password is going to be password. Uh, I'm just doing this here for the sake of the demo, but in production or in real life, you do not want to put your passwords in any file. You probably want to have a password manager such as AWS secret manager or something that does not store the password in the code. So I'm just doing this here for this demo. The DB username is going to be Keycloak. The schema is going to be public. Our console, our Keycloak console uh, username is going to be admin. Key cloak console password is going to be admin. KC proxy is going to be edge. This just means TLS termination is happening. So this is the config for TLS termination, meaning that 
when a client tries to access a key cloak instance, it's going to hit the reverse proxy, in this case, Nginx, as HTTPS. And then Nginx is going to terminate the HTTPS connection and is going to communicate with key cloak as HTTP. So this KC proxy just means TLS termination is happening. The KC hostnet admin URL, again, is a URL for the admin in the UI. And this is the hostname for the, again, just the regular key cloak um, landing page. And these values I will show down below where they're configured. Okay, so we have that. And then now we have the Postgres instance or the Postgres image here. And we're using Postgres 14.2. This is the volumes of the Postgres, Postgres DB, uh, the name, which matches what's up here, key cloak. Uh, rather, matches, yeah. Uh, this key cloak. And then we have the user, which matches what's up here again, key cloak, the username. And then password, which again matches password up here. And then we have a health check, which just basically means that when key cloak starts, it's going to be trying to ping this post Postgres instance. And we don't want it to. Um, give up pinging. So what I'm going to do is that we're going to say that since we see here, key cloak depends on Postgres, it's going to wait on until Postgres is healthy and the health is defined by this. When exit zero is returned, then key cloak is going to be able to start because now it knows that the service is healthy. This Postgres service is healthy. And then, you know, we're exposing it as port four, five, I mean, five, four, three, six. Uh, because I have 5432 already running, I have another service on my laptop, so that's why I chose this. But this could be any number that you want, um, as long as it doesn't clash with anything on your laptop. And then this is the container uh, port, which is the default Postgres port 5432. And then this is also listening on the same network as the key cloak container, which is important because that's how they're able to reference each other by the service name that you see here. Lastly, we have the key cloak Nginx configuration. Here I am going to build the image using this Docker file that I created. I'm not going to uh, configure here because I have other things that I want to put in the Docker file. And then when that's done, um, Engine X runs on port 80 and 4443. And so I want to map those externally because these are the ones I'm going to be hitting in our browser. I'm going to hit 8080 for HTTP and 8443 for HTTPS. And then this depends on key cloak demo. So it depends on this as well. So it waits for this to be healthy before it can start. And also this is on the same network. So all the three container instances are going to be on the same network so they can easily reference each other. Then I have the volumes defined here and the networks that defined here. So notice that this A443 matches what's up here. Cool, so now let's create the Docker file for Nginx. Now I'm going to get the image of Nginx from the Docker repository. So uh, we look up Nginx Docker on the official image. Uh, looks like the official image is 1.23.3. Um, I'm going to go with Alpine. So I really want to just confirm that I'm going to use the right one. So I'll go with 1.23.3 uh, Alpine. And scroll down, this is it. And this is what I want here. So I'll copy that, come back. And in the Docker file from that. And then I'm going to expose the ports for Nginx, which are 80 for HTTP and 443 for HTTPS. And then I'm going to copy the certs from my local host into Nginx because Nginx needs those certificates that I just created this certificate and the private key. And I will do that by doing copy. And then here I'll do uh, search, copy everything, and I'll copy to etc. Uh, what do I call it? Let's say Nginx SSL localhost. So this is inside the Nginx Docker file or uh, Docker instance, sorry. And then this is my local right here. See so search, and then it's going to copy these two. I just remembered one thing. So this Docker file, I want it to be in the same folder as Nginx. So I'm going to move it up here because I want, when I reference certs in here, I want it to be in the same 
pull that. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So let me move this up in there. So now a Docker file inserts on the same level. And so this makes sense here when I copy. Okay, next, now I need to create the engine X config. So I'll go ahead and create a folder here. Name it config. And in here, I'll have a file. I'll call it localhost conf. Um, and before I proceed, I'm going to update this Docker file because I want all the config from this to be mapped to the engine X location for config. Now, all I have to do is do this and say, uh, let's say config and it's be localhost conf. And then I want to map it to the configuration location for engine X. So every file in this Etsy engine X folder is going to be evaluated as a config file. So uh, that's why I'm going to map this or copy this localhost config that I'm going to create here. I'm going to conf copy it into this engine X folder for configs. And I'll just call it uh, engine X.conf. Now let's add the engine X config. I already have this written out, so I will just copy it and paste and explain what it means. So here we have the HTTP block that contains the configuration. So upstream is referring to the backend server that engine X is going to be sending traffic to. In this case, we're sending traffic to our keycloak server. This is a name I just came up with. Doesn't matter what you call it. We're just going to reference it later on. And then server here is a keyword in Nginx and it's going to be pointing to the actual server that's running. In this case, keycloak demo matches what we have in our Docker Compose, which is this service. Remember, all these are running as services since the Docker um, container instances. So when Nginx is running, it has no idea what localhost is and all that stuff. It just knows since the service is going to look for a service. So that's why I use keycloak demo from here and I reference it here so that engine X is going to try and find this service and then look for this port and send traffic there. And this is 8080 because that's what keycloak runs on uh, by default is 8080. Next, we have this server. We have two server blocks. The first block is for HTTP traffic. And what I'm saying here, or what I configured here is that it's listening, this is a default uh, server, and it's listening on port 80, which is the default HTTP port. The server name is host, localhost, which is what we're going to be referencing in the browser. So in the browser, we'll type in HTTP colon slash slash localhost, and then the port. So this is server name is referencing the host name in the URL. So localhost in our case, as you can see down here. And then this is forwarding all the requests that are marked as HTTP to HTTPS. So in this case, we're just saying, if someone types in HTTP and the address, we're going to redirect it automatically to our HTTPS. And then down here, we have the HTTPS configuration. It's listening on port 443, it's SSL. Again, server name is localhost, just like here. Our certificates, we can see uh, the certificate is at this location, which maps what I have, um, in the Docker file should map. Yeah. Etsy, Nginx, SSL, localhost. Etsy, Nginx, SSL, localhost, and the cert name, same thing, and then the key. So that's what Nginx is going to use. And then the location was saying proxy pass, meaning now forward or yeah, send the traffic to this location, which as you notice is not HTTPS, it's HTTP because this would be behind uh, or in a private network. So it would be terminating at uh, HTTPS in Nginx and then forwarding to an HTTP backend server. In our case, Keycloak server matches what's up here, Keycloak server. And then we're forwarding some headers that are coming from the actual host or from the actual client, sorry. So in this case, because if you send a request from the proxy, if you don't forward these, it's not going to know the original sender of the request. So now we just take those and pass them onwards. Whatever the client sends, we're going to pass them on to Keycloak as well. So that's what these headers are doing. Okay, next we're going to create a script that's going to run all these services. So I'll create that script at the root location, the root folder. I'll just call it nginx.sh. 
And first thing I want to do is add CD into this folder app because that's where the Docker Compose file is. And then I'm going to run some Docker Compose or Docker commands in there. So first thing I'm going to do is CD app and Docker Compose. That's uh, down. So any Docker containers that are running, I want to shut them down. I want to build, which means that if I make any changes to the Docker file or Docker Compose, I want to build those new changes so they take effect. And then I want to start up the containers that I defined in the Docker Compose. And then I'll just print out to share. All right, that's done. Um, all right, so now I'm at the root here in the terminal. And so I want to run this and let's see what happens. I need to get some permissions here. All right, I forgot to add a hyphen D here to make it run as a daemon, but let's see what is happening in the browser. So let's just try this and see what it's looking like. Go to Safari, let me close this and go to HTTP, localhost, and I believe it was 8080. Okay, I don't know if I got that right. Docker Compose. Okay, so I see an error here saying cannot load certificate, not a directory, okay. Ah, uh, okay. I think I know what's missing. Forgot to add an extra slash there because this is a folder. So I need to add a slash that everything gets copied into that. So let's try this again. Also, let me update this B. All right, looks like it worked. And let's see what the logs look like. So Docker logs dash F. All right, looks like everything checked out now. I'm not getting that error for certificates. So this I'm trying to use HTTP and this should redirect me to HTTPS because that's what we have in our config for Nginx. Yep, and we're in. So it says this connection is not private. This is a good sign, show details. And this is showing up because I'm using a self-signed certificate. I just signed it on my laptop. But if you use like um, a certificate from a certificate authority, a GoDaddy or a verified certificate authority, you would not see this. All right, so view, nope, visit, yes. And we're in. You can see now, show certificate. And yep, it's showing up here. Okay, but then if you look at the URL, now you see it redirected to 8443 localhost, which is what we had in our config file here. He said anything that comes in that's HTTP redirected to localhost 8443 HTTPS. So that's good. All right, now let's see if we can log in. Okay, admin console. Remember the password was admin admin as shown in the Docker Compose up here. This admin and admin. Boom, and we're in. Since we just used HTTP to get to this website, now let's try and use HTTPS and see how that works. So let's log out from here. Let's log out. Let's clear this and go HTTPS, localhost, and it is 8443. And this also works as well. So both HTTP and HTTPS in the browser work and get us to this page. We can log in, admin, Admin, and we're in. So that's how you configure Heat Cloak with Engine X and using HTTPS.